गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल आई एम डॉक्टर पी एस कौशिक प्रिंसिपल एड श्री दिगंबर इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी दो सा राजस्थान दिस इज माई ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट लेक्चर ऑन द सब्जेक्ट इंजीनियरिंग मैकेनिक्स एंड दिस लेक्चर वी विल बी एनालाइजिंग द ट्रस बाय मैथड ऑफ जॉइंट्स ओके लेट अस नो वाट वी लर्न इन द पास्ट इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी स्टडीड अबाउट द फ्रेम्ड स्ट्रक्चर कॉल ट्रस फर्दर वी स्टडीड अबाउट द डिटर्मिनेंट ट्रस एंड नॉन डिटर्मिनेंट ट्रस द डिटर्मिनेंट और नॉन डिटर्मिनेंट इज गवर्न बाय द फैक्ट दैट इफ ए ट्रस्ट सिस्टम कैन बी एनालाइज बाय यूजिंग द बेसिक स्टेटिक इक्वलर इक्वेशंस then we will call it as a determinant system or statically determinant system here we studied about the basic assumptions while analyzing the truss we further studied about the roof truss and bridge trusses with the real pictures further we found that a determinant truss can be analyzed by graphical method and by methods of analysis there are two methods that is the method of joint and method of section here in this lecture we will be studying the two methods of analysis method of joint and and solving few problems based on it here we will be analyzing uh, the trusses by method of joint only in the next lecture we will be analyzing the trusses by method of section here in this picture you will seeing a railway bridge which is composed of number of truss members again the classification of frame structure again plane frame and space frame a frame structure which can be in a in a single frame in a single space with a plane then we will call it a, a fr plane frame and if it is occupying the three dimensional space then we call it space frame here in the figure we are seeing a electric pole which is a space frame then static determinate frame and statically indeterminate frame that i have already explained that uh, if a truss system can be analyzed by using the basic uh, static equilibrium equations then we call it a statically determinate frame otherwise statically indeterminate frame a plane frame which is if it is perfect then it can be analyzed by using the basic static equilibrium conditions equations so we will call that a plane frame <coughs> then perfect deficient and redundant frame here we have a equation m equal to 2j minus 3 where m is the number of members in the frame and j is the number of joints if this equation is satisfied then the frame will be statically determinate otherwise indeterminate that is if members are less than 2j minus 3 then we call it deficient truss and it will get collapsed when load is applied and if members are more than 2j minus 3 then it is a redundant truss means having more than the required members again okay. reactions at supports here let us know what are the support reactions or what are the types of supports uh, a truss can have normally a truss have one hinge support and other one is roller support in the table below is shown uh, four types of supports that is roller support 
this this roller is shown here here these are the rollers small rollers shown here then this is the pin support or hinge support normally this support is usually of this type of structure it is a hole and a pin is passed through it and the other truss members are connected with it like this then fixed support which is, which is not a part of basically a truss system but in actual practice you will find uh, the trusses are uh, one, one end of the truss is normally fixed that is simple support system where the, uh, the, the member is kept on the uh, fixed structure which can have a, a bit movement it is not pinned basically it is just kept on the surface here a roller support can have only vertical reaction or vertical load whereas a pin support can have both horizontal and vertical reactions or vertical and horizontal load also and fixed support can bear the moment also in addition to the horizontal and vertical reactions it can bear the moment turning moment also whereas simple support is just similar to roller support but rollers are considered frictionless whereas simple support may have some friction so it can also only bear the vertical load only these are some practical examples here you can find this is the uh, this is the column kept on a floor which is fixed by bolts and here yeah. this is a fixed support here this is a hinge support i was telling you that this is a i section having one part is this other one is this and a b member is fixed through a pin here this is the roller support you can find here these are the brackets which are being riveted members are riveted together here i told you in the last lecture basically rivet uh, again for your uh, knowledge a rivet is a part of this shape you can you can find it out in the uh, some engineering workshops practically you can see and uh, if you want you can come to to the mechanical workshop the where i will show you uh, how the uh, rivets looks like normally a nut a, a bolt has a thread here like this and a nut is placed over it to tighten it but in case of rivets the, the nut can be screwed in or screwed out at your will by using a, a simple spanner but in case of rivets these are permanent fixing mechanism here what we do we just uh, drill the hole in the bracket and the member and they pass through this uh, rivet and uh, the uh, this side we support it and from this side we hammer or squeeze it to form a uh, rivet head which will be uh, will be identical of this this way the rivet is fixed and uh, most of the structures you will find with riveted joints only when you see in the railway platforms uh, where sheds are made or on the bridges the advantage of uh, riveted joint compared to bolted joints is that it will not get loosen uh, with time further it can it fills the gap because when we squeeze
दिस द रिबिट हैड वैन वी अप्लाई ए कंप्रेसिव फोर्स एयर एंड एयर इट इफ दिस इज द होल इट विल फिल द होल गैप सो इट विल मेक दिज जॉइंट लिक प्रूफ ऑल्सो वेर एज दैन यू टाइटन ए बोल्ट इट्स स्टेम गेट्स एक्सिस एक्सटेंडेड एंड हेंस इट्स क्रोस सेक्शन इज गेटिंग रिड्यूस ए बिट ड्यू टू पुलिंग ऑफ द स्टेम हेंस इट 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 इज डिफिकल्ट टू मेक इट लीक प्रूफ नाउ डिटर्मिनेसी ए ट्रस्ट इज कंसिडर्ड स्टेटिकली डिटर्मिनेट इफ ऑल ऑफ इट्स support reactions and member forces can be calculated by using only the equations of static equilibrium i am telling you uh, time and again a total number of unknown includes the force in the m members of the truss and the total number of external support reactions since the members in a plane truss are all state axial force members lying in the same plane the force system acting at each joint is coplanar or concurrent consequently rotational or moment equilibrium is automatically satisfied at the joint of a or pin again let us uh, consider this point again she um, this is a joint having one reaction r say a this joint is a and this is a member b having a tensile force fb and this is a member c having a force fc now you can give the direction like this only okay now while taking moment about a this a the this member uh, the line of force line of action of this force is passing through this point line of action of this force is also passing through this point line of action of this force is, reaction is also passing through this point a it so we can say that moment of all the forces about this point a is zero because it does not have the its line of action the line of action of the force does not have any this vertical distance from the <coughs> moment center that is b okay sorry now again uh, as i told you in the last uh, second last line that m equal to 2j minus 3 means statically determinant structure m if m is less than 2j minus 3 then deficient structure if m is greater than 2j minus 3 then redundant or extra member structure assumptions while analyzing the truss very important the following assumptions are made while finding out the forces in the members of a perfect frame that is all members are pin joint already told you all members are of truss are rigid and lie in the same plane because uh, as per your syllabus we will be analyzing only the space the plane frame the members of the truss are slender and of uniform cross section slender means slender means uh, a member having length much larger than the cross section this is a cross section and length is this much then we will say that this member is a slender member it should be of uniform cross section throughout but due to some unavoidable uh, reason say some other member is passing through the same way if this member is in this section and anywhere is is to be reduced or enlarged then it should be symmetrically enlarged and and it should be gradual also for example let us see that if this is the member and we want to reduce the section here that reduce here and at the same time reduce here also 
so that this member looks like this. So, it is not uh, or in other words I can say that is this, the center line of the member should be the uh, same, it should not change the axis, lateral axis, this is longitudinal axis of the member that is polar axis, this is the member, it's, this is the polar or longitudinal axis it should not change the center the cg of the uh, member at every uh, where throughout its length should lie on the longitudinal or polar axis polar axis the frame is loaded only at the end joint the joints only frame is perfect or plane frame the weight of the member unless stated otherwise is regarded as negligible in comparison with the other external forces or loads acting on the truss. Now determination of member force, there are three methods, there is method of joint, method of section also called Ritter method, the graphical method also called Cremona method. From the syllabus point of view, we will be dealing with the method of joints and method of section only. The method of joint is the case of coplanar concurrent force system and the conditions of static equilibrium will be as summation fx equal to 0 and summation fy equal to 0. Students, I am repeating this theory, uh, this theory time and again only because I want you should be convergent with all these as, uh, assumptions and uh, um, theories since that will be a backbone for you in your entire life as an engineer. Then now method of joint. Every joint is treated separately as free body in equilibrium that is the sum of all vertical forces as well as Horizontal forces acting on the joint is equated to 0, that is summation fx equal to 0, summation fy equal to 0 and summation m equal to 0 does not imply here because this is the, uh, there are only two equations are made, this is the summation fx equal to 0, summation fy equal to 0, it means only two uh, unknown can be solved by these two equations. All the pin joints are labeled, a free body diagram of the entire truss is drawn and the reactions at the support is determined using the conditions of equilibrium. Each joint is treated as free body, a certain direction of the forces acting on the joint is assumed and the magnitude of the force is calculated, applying the conditions of static equilibrium that is as mentioned above summation fx equal to 0 and summation fy equal to 0. In case what you assumed the you direction you assume tensile and your answer comes negative then you can automatically switch and consider that the assumed direction was wrong and it is uh, compressive or if you assume my, say compressive uh, direction of the force and you calculated the magnitude and found that it the answer comes out to be negative again then you can say that the direction you was wrong and the force member is having tensile magnitude each joint is treated okay next now start is made from the joint where no more than two force members are known and at least force in one member is known. Again, here the, as you know we have uh, two equations summation f x equal to 0, summation f y equal to 0. So, it can solve only for two unknowns. It, two unknowns can only be worked out by these two equations. So, there should not be more than two unknowns. And to solve it at least one member one force 
should be known otherwise how will we work out finally it must be noted that the nature of the force will be tensile if the force tends to pull the joint and it will be compressive if a member tends to push the joint a member under tension is called tie whereas a member under compression is called a strut for example let us see this is a horizontally kept member we call it beam forces are acting lateral to the longitudinal axis this is a longitudinal axis forces are acting lateral on this one is hinge or simply supported other is roller support so you can say that this beam this is a beam now again if a member is vertically kept on the surface then we call it as column we call it a column column can be short column or long column that is a part of other subject now if this is the member having compressive load only but it is at an angle other than 90 degree other than the vertical then it will be called as strut any member this is the member having a pulling forces on it that is tensile force then it will be called as tie now i can give you some practical example you might have seen in your villages uh, the trailer or harrow being uh, kept with the engage uh, tied with the tractor it is being hinged at the back side and a hydrauli uh, is attached with a member like this having a turn buckle here which can adjust the length of this so that the trailer can be lifted out, out of ground or can be pushed into the ground with the help of this member this member is called tie the, it, the, it is pushed due to its own weight but when you want that uh, the it should not go much deeper into the earth then what we do we just uh, pull it up with the help of this tie rod through a hydraulic uh, mechanism we pull it so you can find this a tie member there other again you will find it in many places here consider this consider this is um, the queen post truss here this is the tie member because it will be having is when load is acting on it then it will be having a pull tensile load so we call it a tie this is a queen post a post a vertical member is said to be a uh, column when its length is uh, more than 3 times its cross sectional dimension but if it is less than 3 uh, times the cross sectional member then we call it a post or this is the post or queen post here because this truss is queen twist now this is a purlin raised board in fill bricks these are the walls or we can have in place of wall we can have column also is training beam at the this is the training beam and then straining is still this is the initial this is a purlin purlin cleat cleat means a joining member cleat is a 
uh, which is joining the purlin with the structure. This is a wall plate. This is a rafter. Rafter. This way you can analyze. You can go through on the internet and you can you can find all these figures in details. Now coming to the analysis part. I told you earlier. Tensile force. It if it is pulling the. A joint, for example, this is the joint, or this is the member. If it is pulling the joint, then it is tensile, because external force will be acting here like this, which you can feel. But the internal structure, they it will also have a, a reactive force, which will be inside. This direction will be opposite to the external force. Now consider. it here this is a joint again if this is you have applied a pull here then to counter it you require a pull here also and uh, to counter it you will require a counter stress or force in the member like this hence this tension uh, you you can denote with the arrow marks as shown here which are facing to each other similarly a a compressive uh, force will be pushing the member here you can find the the compressive force the uh, joint is pushed by this hence the arrow marks will be like this in the member so this is a compressive compressive force in the member now the following principles help you to identify the members not subjected to any force when the truss is loaded refer to the figure a b c a single force cannot form a system in equilibrium this implies that if there is only one force acting at the joint then for the equilibrium of the point this force equals zero with reference to figure 6.a f1 this this all material i have taken from the uh, mechanics book new mechanics book of dr d s kumar when two members meeting at the joint are not collinear and the there is no external force acting on at the joint then the forces in both the members are zero if, the, if these two forces are not collinear here Here, <coughs> uh, these two members are not collinear. Hence, there will be no, there will not be any force on the in these two members. Then, when three members are meeting at unloaded joint, and the out of them two are collinear, then the force in the third joint will be zero. Here, the, this joint does not have any force in it. Again, consider this point. He is telling unloaded means if there is a, any load here, then external load, then there will be there can be a force in this member. But if there is no load, then the mem force will not be there any force in the F three member. That is number three. Now let us see. Take one example with reference to the truss shown in Figure six point seven. identify the members which are not subjected to any force solution now consider joint d for the truss shown in 6.7a this is the joint d <coughs> it is having two members which are at the forces at the joint r f1 in the member dc f2 in the member da f3 in the member df the joint is unloaded and the forces f1 f2 are collinear then there will not be any force in this member 
consider joint D again of truss 6.7 B this is the one there are three forces namely F1, F2, F3 since the joint D is unloaded and F1 and F2 are collinear they, these are collinear then the force in F, F3 will also again be zero consider joint C again this is joint C consider it since F3 is zero the force is acting on joint or F4, F5 and F6 the joint is unloaded and the out of these three two forces are namely F5 and F6 are collinear accordingly the force in F4 is zero thus the members AC, DC will not be subjected to any load now consider this figure again consider the load and support system for the truss system depicted here this force is acting like this here so all these members will not have any force obviously then there will not be no force on the members other than BD DF and FH now let us use the method of joint to analyze this truss system simple triangular truss having one angle 60 degree other is 30 degree the span AB is of 5 meter first of all <coughs> let I have shown here these two extra figures to depict about the hinge joint and ro roller joint here consider this figure and analyze the dimensions <coughs> here Here, C, AB is 5 meter, that is AC is angle, ACB is 60 degree automatically, uh, this AC will be AB um, cos 60, that is 0 0.5, then it will be 2.5, this dimension will be 2.5 meter. Then, drop a vertical here then this angle is 90 degree then it will be 1.25 meter how that is sin 60 of AC that AD will be 1.25 meter Consider the free body diagram of the whole truss 6.9. The triangle ABC is right angle triangle and angle ACB is 90 degree. AC is equal to AB cos 60 that is 5 into 0 0.5 that is 2.5. Distance of line of action of 30 kN force from A that is AD will be AC cos 60 again 2.5 into 0 0.5 1.25 I told you earlier. Taking moment about A here we are taking moment about A then C this is RB will have a counterclockwise moment then the force will have a clockwise moment 
will and the, we have to equate these moments and then R B into 5 equal to 30 into 1.25 which gives you R B equal to 7.5 kilo Newton and by you can simply reduce it uh, deduct it from the total load that is 30 minus 7.5 22.5 that R A will be 22.5. Now consider the free body diagram of joint A with the direction of force assumed as shown in figure 6.10 equation of equilibrium can be written as this is the joint A consider it let us see how what happens take it vertical upward this this will have a force like this you can calculate like this sorry resolve the force a f1 into horizontal and vertical this is a one but this is the other vertical this will be F1 sin 30 and this will be F1 cos 30. Since this is angle 30 degree. Summation F A equal to 0 f x equal to 0 means f 2 minus f 1 cos 60. He has resolved these forces like this in this problem. Yeah. This is the vertical component and this is the horizontal component like this. So, he has resolved like this or you can say again like this. He has taken this angle 60 degree. Then this is F1 cos 60 and this is F1 sin 60. This is up to you how you calculate. So, F2 minus F1 cos 60 is equal to 0 and summation Fy equal to 0 means F1 sin 60 minus Ra equal to 0 which gives you F1 29.97 kN that is compressive and F2 equal to 12.99 kN tensile. Again, now joint B, <coughs> F2 minus F1 cos 60 equal to 0, F1 sin 60 minus R A equal to 0, F1 comes out to be 25.97 kN and F2 comes out 12.99 kN. Now, joint B consider the free body diagram of joint B. The force F2 in the member AB has already been calculated above and found to be tensile. Hence, the force F2 will be will pull the joint B and will be directed away from it as shown in figure here. From the equation of equilibrium, summation F equal to 0 means F3 equals 30 minus F2 equal to 0 which gives you F3 equal to 15 point 15 newton compressive. The force F3 is acting towards the joint B which means the member BC is in compression. Now consider another problem 6.5 analyze this truss shown in figure 6.12 this is the cantilever truss here you can find this is 3 meter, this is 3 meter and this is parallel to it, this is also 3 meter. Similarly, this is 4 meter, this is 4 meter, it means these two will be equal in dimension and this is all will be also be equal. This, this and this, this one, this one and this one will be of equal length, this is, this is and this are of
And this and this are of equal length. This, this, and this are of equal length. And this is equal. Hence, now you can make a trigonometric analysis of this structure first. From the geometry of the given truss, DC equal to EB equal to under root 3 square plus, plus 4 square, that is 5. Sin theta or sin phi comes out to 3 upon 5 and cos theta and cos phi comes out to 4 upon 5. Now consider joint C, the free body diagram of joint C with the direction of forces assumes as shown. Equation of equilibrium can be written as summation fx equal to 0, the 20 minus f2 minus f1 cos theta equal to 0 and f y equal to f y summation f y equal to 0 means minus 60 minus f1 sin theta equal to 0. It gives you f1 equal to 60 upon sin theta that is 60 upon 3 by 1 y 5 that is minus 100 kilo newton f2 equal to 20 minus f1 cos theta that is 20 minus minus 100 into 4 upon 5 that is 100 kilo newton here you you can uh, know easily that the negative sign of the magnitude f1 shows that the a wrong choice has been made while the assuming the direction obviously the assumed direction of the force in the member cd needs to be reversed Therefore, CD is a compressive member and F1 is, comes out to be 100 kN. Joint D, equations of equilibrium are Fx is equal to 0 means F3 minus F1 cos 30 equal to 0 and summation F1 equal to 0 means F4 minus F1 sin theta minus 120. By calculation, you can easily find out that F4 comes out to be 180 newton, kilo newton, that is tensile, and F3 comes out to be 80 kilo newton, that is compressive. Now you can make a table all for this. Joint B, equation of equilibrium R, F, summation Fx equal to 0, which is F2 minus F5 cos 5 minus F6 cos 5. On calculation, you will find the equation that is minus F5 plus F6 is, is equal to minus 125. Now, and summation, sum Fy equal to 0 means minus 100 minus 80 plus F5 sin 5 plus F6 sin 5, which gives you an equation F5 plus F6 is equal to 466.67. That is second equation. Now, solving these two equations, you, you find F5 equal to 295.8 kN tensile and F6 is equal to 170.8 kN compressive. Now, results can be tabulated as below, that is member AB 295.8, that is tensile in nature, B 170.8, compressive in nature, BC 100, tensile in nature, BD 180, tensile in nature, D 180, sorry, sorry 80, that is compressive in nature and DC 100 kN that is all again compressive or you can make a table but before that you, you can mark that a force tensile will be taken as positive, positive and uh, compressive as negative. Then you can make a table the force member and you can say that tensile means don't show any sign but when there is a compressive show a dot like this negative mark it negative like this then you can show the table this way also no need of showing this uh, ab force as plus but if you show then also good so you can so you have you should you and you must do this because this table is a must because the calculation becomes very lengthy and uh, the examiner may not may get confused and he may give you a may not give you some point numbers on the you you are not uh, able to put up the uh, your answers uh, fairly clearly so it is better
to make this table after calculating all the members in the required uh, forces in all the members. Thanks for watching this video.